Good morning and welcome to our webinar on COS, the Certified Occupational Safety Specialist. We're excited to have you this morning. My name is Paulette Maluski. I'm a program director here at Kirkwood Community College, located in eastern Iowa, specifically in the city of Cedar Rapids. Also with me today is my colleague David Hughes, who is our fire and safety programmer. And between the two of us, we have 17 years here at Kirkwood. So we feel that we were pretty qualified when about two years ago, we were approached by a training vendor who offers programs in the essentials of safety and health in a wide variety of work environments to determine if they were gonna be a good training partner. And we are excited to tell you that we found that to be true. So we're gonna talk about that training partner cost today. And I would like to point out to you at the bottom of your screen, you have a little chat button and that will allow you to type in questions. So this will last about 20 to 25 minutes and at the end we'll have an opportunity for questions. So um, again, thank you for joining us today. Thanks, Paulette. I'm hoping today to maybe get you off the fence and uh, down the road to a, a better safety credentials that you deserve. So let's start with our safety credentials. Uh, what, what do you want to look for here? Why do you look for credentials? Uh, possible promotion, <laughs> career advancement is always a key. Uh, we're always looking forward to that. Credentials lead, uh, able to lead others in safety. That's what we do as a safety professional, as a, as a leader. Uh, we lead them safely and uh, prevent those injuries. Create a safer environment for employees. Once again, just uh, lead them through the safety. And it's always nice to have a fancy certificate on your wall. <laughs> so these are your credentials. Kind of looks like an alphabet soup. <laughs> Yeah, there are over 300 safety credentials. And whichever one you choose, you're sending the message to your employer that you have a commitment and dedication to your profession and the areas of safety, health, and environmental risk. So what are we looking for, Paulette? Well, third-party recognition offers credibility. And if you decide to mandate a designated credential to be earned by all the safety professionals in your company, that way there'll be a consistent message within your workforce. Another thing to look for is, is there a recertification option? The benefit of that is of course, the, uh, the continuous improvement that comes along with recertification. And then the training and testing combined. So I would suggest that it's important to find out if a program trains only or tests only or both. So in other words, find out if the training is set up for you, with the intent of you passing the exam or is it a learning course to improve your knowledge and your skills while also earning a credential through passing an exam? The rigorous instructor qualifications are important because of course you want someone who is well-equipped, knowledgeable and experienced training you. And you may wanna ask yourself, is it more than just compliance training? You can learn what the standard is, but you need to know why the standard is in place and how to get the employees in compliance. So basically ask yourself if it offers behavioral based safety tip tips, such as how to motivate employees and get them actively engaged in safe behaviors. So are all programs the same? Well, obviously the answer is no. Uh, cost is always a concern. It's, it's a huge factor. Is, is it gonna come out of my pocket? Is it, you know, what is the, uh, the end result? Uh, will my company pay for it? Uh, what, what are they going to expect from it? Prerequisites, some uh, accreditations have uh, prerequisites as a college degree. You have to take a class to get a class. Uh, just uh, You need to know what those prereqs are. What about general industrial construction? If you're in one or the other, um, we will have to, uh, you have to decide what to do on that. So certificate, don't, don't let that, um, fool you about the general industry because we also need to know if you work in a factory or in some distribution uh, that's they'll talk about that too uh, receive college credit that's an important one and who recognizes certification is it national national is it regional is it state or does your company want you to do those uh, certifications all these are important factors uh, determine if it's good good fit for you mm -hmm. So let's talk about the uh, Certified Occupational Safety Specialist, the COSS. 
We have an agreement with the Lion Safety Council, uh, the American Council for Construction Education, ACCE, is the certifying body for the constructional education for colleges and universities. COSS, COSS, is the only non-degree program to receive the national endorsement from ACCE. So some benefits of COSS. Psychology of safety, the mindset. It makes you think about safety. Has a recognition. That's what we need to do when we go out on the floor, we go out on the site. Uh, we just take a walk down the hallway to, to the break room. We need to be thinking about safety on the job. The true cost of an accident, somebody gets hurt, somebody slip, you know, slips on the ice, uh, breaks an arm, you know, pokes a finger, and now you're, you're talking OSHA recordable. Okay, we can deal with that, but what if they're out off the job for two weeks, two months, a year? You're going to have to take that cost that you're still paying them, and that now you have to train somebody else. You, know, you could lose the uh, production side of it, so your production could go down. So you need to understand what the cost the cost of an accident is. How do you start a safety and health program? Uh, sometimes you're just handed a folder and say, "Here you go. Mm -hmm. This is your program." So you figure it out. So cost is going to help walk you through some of that, and understanding the rights of the employees have under OSHA. Employees are, want to know what rights they have, and you're going to be able to explain what they are. You'll talk about the standards, the, o, the letters of interpretation. You'll discuss OSHA memos, and you'll go through a lot of OSHA training material. Um, of course, uh, these are all the main core of the Certified Occupational Program. So what is COS? It's a program designed for safety professionals. It doesn't matter if you're entry level. You know, you walk in on Monday morning and I'd say they give you that safety folder and say, okay, now you're in charge of safety. I need this program. Or if you're the experienced uh, safety person, 20 years plus experience, we've had people take this class that uh, are entry level and it's an eye opening event for them. And I've had an individual there that's been there for 20 uh, in construction for 20 years, took the class. And he said it was one of the better classes he's ever taken. So if there's something for every everyone to learn at any time. Some core competencies, you have them. You have them inside you, the safety core. Your company has them, or are they reasonable? And are they uh, being able to be applied? Cost is gonna help you with this. Uh, cost will actually uh, focus on some relevant content. You know, what's hot with OSHA right now? Trenching, if you've gotten, if you're connected with OSHA at all with any of the uh, blogs that they send out or newsletters, trenching is the number one topic right now for the next three months. Again, COS is gonna talk about this. What is hot for OSHA and how to get those programs going? Once again, uh, use the, they use both construction and general industry standards, but once again, don't let that fool you. If you work in a warehouse, even office worker or distribution workers, you still need to know what emergency exit is and the rules for that, keeping them clear. Your company still needs fire extinguisher training and definitely hazardous communication. And again, COS is going to talk about these and how to incorporate them into your safety program. And Dave, in addition to warehouse um, and distribution, you mentioned office. And I think that's sometimes something that people might not necessarily consider as a need um, for a class such as this. Uh, but I think it's really appropriate for all of those areas. Um, one of the things that we love about it is that it's a small group. So I think we cap it at maybe 20 as a high end. So there's a lot of small group activity and work, and it's very interactive and engaging. So I was just talking to a colleague yesterday, and he was talking to some past um, people who have earned the certificate here at Kirkwood, and they can't even speak highly enough about how they loved the pace, they loved the interaction, they loved how comprehensive it was, and um, they found it super beneficial. So let's talk about some of those specific things. It's 40 hours of instruction, so it's a week-long event, <laughs> kind of an event, because by the uh, time Monday starts and you're not really sure what you're into, by the end of Friday, you're going, what did I just do? It's a pretty quick week. <laughs> You have a lot of hands-on workshops, and that is you know, you're given a task, maybe look up some standards, uh, look at some violations and how they apply to the OSHA standards. 
face-to-face -face learning well obviously this is this is what cost is all about the instructor is going to talk your fellow classmates are going to talk the experience so you, you probably more likely will have somebody that is brand new to safety and you may have somebody that has multiple years you're going to have stories so this is where you learn your face-to-face -face. case studies what was the accident what was the cause what happened with the company and what was our solution and then we go a little bit farther and say okay the solution was it really the solution do we follow up on that so a lot of case studies student presentations this is the one that seems to scare a lot of people because you, you don't want to stand in front of people and, and tell them a little uh, little story about safety but guess what you'll get to do that now you do that all the time when somebody comes up and talks to you and wants to understand why they need to wear the PPE, you do a presentation. You explain to them why they need to wear the PPE. So don't let that one scare you away. Daily quizzes, got to have them. Make sure that you're learning what you need to learn. And then there's going to be a final exam. All these are will bring the learning objectives into a focus. Yes, and I think when you take this class, you'll have the knowledge to help lower fatalities, near misses, and OSHA citations. Uh, one thing that really stands out to me is that this is a globally recognized certification, and there are over 13,000 people who hold this credential from over 48 states and 30 different countries. So that's definitely something that sets those costs apart. Now, the American Society of Safety Engineers this is what uh, cost was based off of, off their profession, uh, their benchmark of their definition of uh, safety. So at the end of the cost, you should be able to anticipate hazardous conditions and practices. You, you gotta be able to do this. It's, it's, I hate to say it's as simple as uh, seeing that somebody's on the ladder and they're doing it wrong. They're bending and they're leaning too far. You anticipate that they could, they could uh, tip over. I know that the curriculum, they even talk about cranes uh, simple cranes is be able to make sure that the ground is good. Uh, anticipate what it is. Uh, develop hazard control programs. Talked about that a couple of times. You're handed the book, the book and said, here you go. Cost should help you out, be able to start at the beginning and get to the end. It's safety is just continuously redoing things and uh, cost will talk about that. Implement those practices that you just developed. Sell it to your people. You've got to sell safety. One of the hardest things you can do, you have to sell it down to the employees and you have to sell it up to management. Cost is going to talk about that. How do I develop a measurable audit? You can go out and just say, yep, 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 everybody's wearing the PPE, but really, were they really doing it? Cost is going to help you walk through that, how you measure it, how you audit it, and how you effectively control those hazards. Mm -hmm. And I think that's to your point, Dave, it covers both theory and application, and that really sets it apart. Another benefit is that this is a three year credential. So we're going to advance the slide so that you can see here where I'm talking about that credential last three years and the fact that um, you'll have ongoing access to the instructors. So, so the, our, our cost instructors will give you their contact information. And that will provide you a connection to them, but also there's some networking that happens as a result of you earning this credential and they'll keep you informed on industry updates so that you have this wonderful resource of brain share that keeps you up to date um, once you complete the program. Cost is uh, provided in agreement with the Alliance Safety Council. So that's who brings us cost. That's our, our vendor partner. And um, as Dave mentioned earlier, that American Council for Construction Education is the certifying body. And that certifying body is for construction, education for colleges, universities, and trade schools. Um, so that's why we partnered with them, is we're their target audience, and um, they do a wonderful job with us. COS is the only non-degree program to receive national endorsement from ACCE, so um, we're pretty proud of that. So Dave, can you um, talk a little bit to us about the recertification process? Well, they just re redefined some of this. So they sent me out some new material. And I tell you what, it's one of the most easiest recertification that you can have. Uh, it's done every three years, as Paulette says. You accumulate points over those, those three years. All you need is 15 points. I say all you need is because some of them are, you do your job and you already get five points. 
So that's pretty good. Continuing education, professional development. Uh, Kirkwood offers these classes. It's the ocean number classes that we call. It's the trainer's classes. You, you take these classes and, and you'll get points for them. Attend a safety conference. That's pretty simple to do. You're going to learn a lot. Uh, be a presenter at a safety conference. And then the safety and health job experience. Your employer confirms that you did that. So what you do is you maintain a record of these points, submit the documentation. Of course, there's going to be a fee that they'll request, and then you maintain that cost certification. And this is a, a uh, chart that kind of defines your points there. That top one is the one I'm talking about, the OSHA number classes that you take. You can get up to 15 hours right there. So you take a, a, couple, of, a couple classes and you got your points. Uh, down to the... Uh, I'm sorry, uh, I want to explain what uh, ocean number classes mean. We are a host site for the Great Plains Ocean Education Center at Metropolitan Community College in Kansas City. So we are authorized to teach what I like to call official OSHA classes. And uh, you get a fancy certificate. And once again, it goes, uh, the points go towards the COSS. Attend a safety conference. Again, real simple to do. And about the sixth one down, I want to point that out again, is about the job experience. Uh, just get verification from your employer that you've uh, been on the job for a year and you get five points. Hmm. Nice. So I think you have some coming up of this 40 hour training. Am I correct? Yeah, we're going right around the corner here, November 12th through the 16th. Uh, looks like the class is going to be uh, attended well, but we still have room for that. A couple ways you can enroll is uh, call the number that's on the screen there. Uh, 398-1022 and ask for the COSS, the cost ID. You can just say COSS and then pretty much can point you in the right direction. Or if you want to, you can roll online. And then our other offerings that we have next year, and try not to get those November dates mixed up with you, uh, next March and August and following November. So I want to encourage you to sign up early for the best pricing and uh, get that under your belt and, and do some planning. Terrific. Well, thanks, Dave, for all the information about this class. We have one question, Dave, a little bit about the outline. Do um, you want to just kind of review a high level what happens each day? Yeah, we can do that. Uh, thanks for the question. Uh, so obviously on day one, we're going to talk about what is cost, and we're going to talk about introduction to OSHA and what it's all about, uh, how to record uh, accident, you know, use of OSHA 300 form and then uh, explain what the incident rates are so you know what that number is. Uh, later on in the day two, we'll talk about the real cost of uh, accidents and injuries. And we start getting into some of the subparts. And it looks like we're going to be looking at the new walking and working surface, uh, which is important. It has changed uh, tremendously, a lot of different numbers in it. Uh, middle of the week, we'll get into some more subparts. We're going to talk about electrical, scaffold, emergency action plans. And let's talk about the, uh, the safety behavior, the BBS. Boy, what a big thing. You could talk about days on that. Uh, talk about your psychology of the safety and how, again, how you sell it. And risk assessment. I go out and I uh, see a task that's going to happen. Is there a safety risk that we need to consider? And we'll understand the investigation. Towards the end of the week, we're going to get in hazards, uh, hazards communication, fall protection, cranes, and PPE, machine guarding. So we're going to touch on a lot of different subparts that cost feels that's important, that OSHA feels important. Those are where the accidents happen. So that's where why cost has decided to talk about that. The last day, I said you're going to you're going to do a presentation. You know, finish up on maybe some other subparts that you have. Talk about the safety and health program and how you can apply it. Uh, that's it. Graduate. You'll get a certificate that day. Thanks for joining us. If we don't see you at a future cost uh, training, maybe we'll see you at our health and safety conference on February 21st in 2019. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.